Hi guys, in this video we'll be looking at specific heat capacity, electrical method of finding specific heat capacity, and then we'll finish with a summary. First we're going to define what specific heat capacity is. When thermal energy is added to an object by way of heat, the temperature of an object increases. So as we add heat to this water, its temperature is going to increase. We now want to quantify the amount that the temperature of an object will increase when a particular amount of thermal energy is transferred to it. So if we add some known amount of heat to water, we can find how much the temperature of the water increases by. We can also do the reverse and find out how much an object has cooled when a known amount of thermal energy has been removed. So here we're taking heat from the water and this leads to a decrease in the temperature of the water. In order to find the change in a particular substance's temperature during heat transfer, we have to know its specific heat capacity. The specific heat capacity of a substance is the amount of energy required per unit mass to change its temperature by one Kelvin or one degree Celsius. So it's the thermal energy or heat per unit mass per degree Kelvin. It's better to express specific heat capacity as an equation. And this equation is specific heat capacity C is equal to thermal energy transferred Q divided by mass times the change in temperature, which we're going to represent as delta theta. So this C is the specific heat capacity. Q is the symbol for thermal energy measured in joules. Mass is measured in kilograms. And change in temperature delta theta is measured in degrees Celsius or degrees Kelvin. Recall that a change in one degree Celsius is the same as a change in one degree Kelvin. So this is why it doesn't matter whether we use degree Celsius or Kelvin for change in temperature. And this equation is our definition for specific heat capacity. This equation enables us to find the units of specific heat capacity. We know that specific heat capacity is equal to thermal energy divided by mass times change in temperature. And we can express this in terms of the units of each quantity which are joules divided by kilograms times Kelvin. And this means that the units of specific heat capacity are equal to joules per kilogram per Kelvin. The equation we just showed is more commonly expressed with thermal energy input, which is Q or E, as the subject. So we have Q for thermal energy is equal to mass M times specific heat capacity C times delta theta. You also might see it expressed with E equals mc times delta theta. The sign of energy change here is positive when the object heats up and negative when it cools down. So as we're putting heat into the water here, the increase in thermal energy Q is going to be positive. However, when we take heat out of the water, like an ice cube melting in the water, Q for the water is going to be negative because the water is cooling down. Let's do an example. We heat two kilograms of water on a hob from 40 degrees Celsius to 90 degrees Celsius. Water has a specific heat capacity of 4,200 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. How much thermal energy must we have put into the water? So we're trying to find Q that we put into the water. And we know that there are two kilograms of water inside the saucepan. We're also told the initial temperature of 40 degrees Celsius and the final temperature of 90 degrees Celsius. Finally, we know that the specific heat capacity of the water is 4,200 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. Our first step is to find the temperature change, which we give the symbol delta theta to. And if we look back at the question, we see that delta theta is going to be equal to 90 degrees Celsius minus 40 degrees Celsius, which is equal to 50 degrees Celsius. And this temperature interval is going to be equal to 50 Kelvin. Because remember, an interval of 1 degree Celsius is the same as an interval of 1 degree Kelvin. Our second step is to substitute the values into our equation for energy input. And remember that this equation is Q equals mass times specific heat capacity times change in temperature delta theta. So we have Q is equal to, and remember we were given the mass and the specific heat capacity in the equation. Mass is 2 kilograms and specific heat capacity is 4,200 joules per kilogram per Kelvin. So now we substitute these into our equation. And remember our value for delta theta that we found was 50 Kelvin. And this gives us a value for Q of 420,000 joules. 
and in standard form this is 4.2 times 10 to the 5 joules. We're now going to show how we can experimentally determine what the specific heat capacity of a material is. We can find out the value of specific heat capacity of a material by investigating how the temperature of a known mass of the material changes when we input a known amount of thermal energy. And this is the experimental setup we're going to be using where this distributes heat into the material and the thermometer is going to measure the temperature change. We can quantify precisely how much thermal energy we're putting into an object by using an electric heater for a known amount of time. So this heater is distributing a known amount of heat into the material and we know this amount of heat because we can calculate it by using the equation that thermal energy is equal to power times time or in symbols Q equals P times T. We can use our knowledge of power in a circuit to find out exactly how much energy we expect the electric heater to output as heat. We know that power P is equal to current I times voltage V and the voltage is measured by a voltmeter and the current is measured by an ammeter as seen in this circuit here. So now we know that the thermal energy Q is equal to current I times voltage V times time little t. In this experiment it's really important to thermally isolate the material heater and thermometer together to ensure that the maximum amount of thermal energy from the heater goes into the material we're investigating. So here's our experimental setup and we want to make sure that the whole thing is thermally isolated so that all of the heat from this heater will go into the system and will not be lost. Once the duration of the experiment has concluded, we'll find the change in temperature and the amount of electrical energy converted to thermal energy. So we find the heat outputted Q and the change in temperature delta theta. Along with the known mass of the sample, we can use this to find the specific heat capacity of the material. And remember that our equation for specific heat capacity is C equals Q divided by mass times the change in temperature delta theta. For example, a 4 kg sample of iron is thermally isolated with an electric heater and a thermometer. The electric heater is run with a voltage of 15 volts and a current of 4 amps for 20 minutes. The initial temperature of the iron is 20 degrees Celsius and the final temperature is 60 degrees Celsius. Assuming all of the electrical energy of the heater is converted to thermal energy in the iron, what is the specific heat capacity of iron? Our first step is to write out the equation for specific heat capacity to identify what values we need to find. So we have specific heat capacity C is equal to thermal energy Q divided by mass times by change in temperature delta theta. And in this equation we know the mass and we need to find the change in temperature as well as the thermal energy. Our second step is to calculate the change in temperature of the sample of iron and we give the symbol delta theta to change in temperature. Looking back at the question, we're told that the initial temperature is 20 degrees Celsius and the final temperature is 60 degrees Celsius, which means that the change in temperature is 60 degrees Celsius minus 20 degrees Celsius, which gives us an answer of 40 degrees Celsius or 40 Kelvin for delta theta. Our third step is to calculate the power running through the electric heater. We know that power is equal to current I times voltage V. Let's look back at the question. We're told that the electric heater is run with a voltage of 15 volts and a current of 4 amps. So we know that the power is equal to 15 times 4, which gives us an answer for power of 60 watts. Now we need to find the thermal energy gained by the iron sample, which is Q. Q is equal to power times time, and we know that power is 60 watts, and time is given in the question as 20 minutes, which is 20 times 60 seconds. And this gives us a value for Q of 72,000 joules. We're going to leave it in this form for now because we're going to use it in a later equation. Our final step is to substitute in values to find the specific heat capacity of iron. So your specific heat capacity is equal to Q, which is 72,000 joules, divided by mass, which we're told in the question is 4 kilograms, times by our change in temperature, which is 40 Kelvin. And this gives it an answer for C as 450 
joules per kelvin per kilogram. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap goodbye smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.